The Australian's correspondent, Adam Crichton. Adam, so much news with the upcoming US presidential election. A shocking Indeed. second assassination attempt. We've now seen today the body cam footage, very dramatic of the moment that the cops arrested the man who's now been charged. How did Donald Trump <clears throat> respond to this today? He spoke for the first time. Yeah, well, certainly the response has been very different from the first assassination attempt where, where he really reigned in his rhetoric and he was more careful to, uh, to not put blame on the Democrats. But this time, certainly, he's gone full throttle. He's been extremely aggressive in saying that the reason for this second attempt was the Democrat Party rhetoric, and that's from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris down. So certainly a very different response this time. Look, I mean, is, it, is that fair? Maybe. I mean, both sides, I think, engage in this sort of extreme rhetoric. And I think that's, you know, that is partly because there are very large differences now between the two major political parties in the US and they also need to get their base out to vote. You know, this is an assassination attempt. I think we just, in a sense, have <clears throat> really undermined just how serious this is, trying to kill off a uh, future president and past president. Do you think that maybe some of the leading political figures in the United States, former presidents, haven't been as vocal about this as they should be? Yeah, look, that's a very good point, Sherry. I mean, certainly the US does have a horrible history of political assassinations, you know, way more in this country, I think, than other countries around the world, even per capita. Uh, and yes, you're right. Look, I think, you know, the former presidents have not really said anything about this. I mean, you know, and maybe that goes to the point that Kamala Harris said that she was very glad that uh, Donald Trump was safe, but she also says that, you know, that he's an existential uh, threat to democracy. So, I mean, can you believe both of those things at the same time? Uh, you know, some Democrats liken him to Hitler. I mean, you know, would you be happy if Hitler was still alive? I don't think so. So, so yeah. I think there's a real problem here with the rhetoric. Uh, well, the Secret Service is once again under scrutiny, but Donald Trump um, has thanked all the law enforcement officials. The thing that concerned me, though, is that there are reports that this uh, assassin was in the vicinity of the golf course for some 11 hours uh, before he was noticed. <clears throat> I mean, how does that happen, that there's someone driving around with weapons for 11 hours before being picked up? Yeah, look, it is extraordinary. I mean, he was in the vicinity of the golf course... Well, actually, in the same spot. Uh, that's what the FBI said at a press conference earlier. Um, and that's why he brought packs of food, apparently, uh, the backpacks, of course. Well, I mean, one of the mysteries was that uh, Trump's arrival at the course was not on his public schedule. He doesn't have a public schedule. And so I guess this guy, Routh, was just waiting around for that 12 hours until he arrived. I mean, everyone knows that Trump likes to play golf. Uh, it was on the weekend. That's when Trump does play golf. So, look, he was just waiting around. I mean, you know, one, the one crazy thing about this guy is his age, I think. He was 58. Uh, like, that's a really old would-be assassin, don't you think? I mean, most people tend to calm down as they get older, but, but certainly not this guy who's, you know, whose social media posts actually yeah. reflected all of the Democrat talking points. All right, Adam Crichton, we're out of time. Thanks for joining me.